fishing is a mainstay all over the world, but especially here in Chicago. People fish for food, to pass the time, for the fun of it, for relaxation, and for many other reasons. When Jesus was here on earth as a divine God in the form of a human man, he approached a boat where two men were fishing one day. The two men had been on the lake trying to catch fish all day, but they'd had no success. And when Jesus came along, he simply told them how to fish in deep water. I'm Pastor Keith. Coming to you all the way from Chicago, Illinois, downtown. I'll be right back as I get inside and get some warmth. And we'll continue the message on fishers of men. Using Jesus as bait is only the beginning. Again, I'm Pastor Keith, and today's lesson is about fishers of men. Using Jesus as the bait is only the beginning. You have to get people prepared in order to be ready for them to go out into the battlefield and into the war against the enemy. So today I'm going to talk to you about several ways that you can get people prepared or get yourself prepared to go out into the field, into the battlefield, and get ready for the war against the enemy. The type of bait you use depends on what you're most comfortable with. So here are a few things that you can use that I've used over the years that you can apply to your own situation in evangelism or outreach. I have a hat that says I love Jesus and I wear my hat without having to say a word anytime I walk even to stores such as Target or Walmart or if I'm going to a ball game where everyone else is wearing the hat of the actual team I wear my hat that says I love Jesus and in that way I'm able to use bait for Christ in order to draw men unto himself through me. Number one is a hat. Number two is a cross. I typically wear my cross openly on the outside of my sweater or the outside of my shirt or the outside of a sweatshirt and again it draws people without me having to say a word. Number two is a cross. Number three is your walk. The life you live speaks volumes without you having to say anything. If you're living right, people will see it because it will show. And just the opposite is true. If you're not living right, people will see it because it will show. And the way that you live, your walk, is what will lead people to Christ. So number three is your walk. Number four is your talk. If you're constantly using profanity and always talking about things of this world, change it. Bridle your tongue so that it becomes an instrument to talk to people about Jesus rather than the things of this world. Let your speech and the things that you say and your testimony be the tool that you use as bait because it is an effective way to show people that you have a relationship with God. So number four is your talk. Number five is a song. There are countless times that I can remember and recall where I've been either on a bus or on a train or walking down a mall or inside of a mall where I have start to hum or sing gospel songs or even familiar hymns 
and it catches people's attention. And there have been many times when I'm either walking through the grocery store or even waiting uh, in the airport, there have been countless times that I can recall where I'll start to sing or I'll start to hum a familiar song or gospel tune and it catches people's attention. So number five is a song. Number six is your testimony. Each and every one of us have been through some things. Some of us have been through more than others. All of us have at one point in our lives or another experienced something that we had to get through or face and overcome, or even something that almost took us down or may have taken us out if Jesus had not been there to help us get through it. Sharing your testimony is still one of the most effective ways to get people to know Jesus on the planet. Noah did it, Moses did it, Joshua did it, even all of the major and minor prophets, they all used their relationship with God to get other people to know Him through their testimony. And if you jump all the way to the New Testament, even Saul, when he was stopped and confronted by Christ on the road to Damascus, by the time Apostle Paul got to where he was going, his testimony became his calling card. So number six on the list of things that you can use to help people get to know Jesus while you're fishing for men is your testimony. Number seven is a t-shirt. In spring and summer I will typically wear a t-shirt that has a cross on it or has a saying about Christ on it or just the words love God on it and you'd be surprised at how it gets people's attention. You can have the name of a church on it, you can have it, just about anything that relates to the kingdom on a t-shirt and you'd be surprised at how it gets people's attention. So number seven is something as simple as a t-shirt. Number eight is your Bible. God's Word itself is the most effective tool to use to get people to know Christ. Have you ever openly read your Bible at work? How about just sitting out in the park? Have you ever just walked down the street holding your Bible so that people who would pay attention to it could see it? Have you ever given new Bibles away as gifts to people that are walking down the street or especially people that are holding signs standing on the sides of the road or asking for help along the sides of the road. Have you ever given away new Bibles, God's Word, to those individuals? Today's lesson is titled, Fishers of Men. And we're talking about ways and things to use to fish for men, but the most important thing that you can use overall is to lift up Jesus. Jesus said that if we lift him up, if we lift him up, that he would draw all men unto himself. But the key in that is you. See, it said if we lift him up, that means we have to do the work to lift Jesus up. So you and me and you have to be the vessel that he uses so that we can lift him up and he can draw men unto himself. Jesus is the most effective and most important tool to use when you're fishing for men. When you're talking about fishing for men, finding the right location is essential. In the opening of this message, when I was outside in the snowstorm and the cold, I mentioned that one day Jesus came across two men in a boat and they were fishing. 
And they had been out there all day and they hadn't caught anything. And when Jesus came along, he simply told them how to fish in deep water. And what that means in terms of fishing for men is that some of the very places that you are already used to going are the places that you need to be. But the difference is that those places that you're used to going for your own pleasure, you're now going to go there for God's purpose. And in most cases, you've already been to some of these places, but you did not go there with the intent to lift Jesus up so he could draw men unto himself so that it would lift up and build up and edify God's kingdom. See, many of you have already been to homeless shelters and nursing homes and prisons and orphanages. Many of you have already been to hospitals for one reason or another. Some of you have witnessed people sleeping outside at night and I don't mean people sleeping outside at night to get a new iPhone or a new television the next morning. I mean people who physically have to sleep outside at night because they don't have any other option. Some of you have walked into libraries during the day, but the difference is when you're fishing for men that you go to those places with the purpose in mind that you're going to help win souls back to God. So you probably did not go there with the mission and purpose and passion for evangelism and outreach. And you probably went there for whatever it was you were going for, to visit somebody in the hospital or to take out a book in the, from the library. And, but again, the difference when you're fishing for men is that you go to these same places with the expressed intent of helping to lift Jesus up so that he can draw men unto himself. See, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, but specifically verses 35 to 36, Jesus mentions all these places in detail because all of these places are essential to you being used as a vessel to lift up Christ so that he can do the drawing unto himself. All of these places, such as the hospital and the nursing home and the orphanage and the prisons, they're all considered deep water. Again, when Jesus happened upon two men that were fishing and they had been out there all day, but they didn't catch anything, he simply told them to fish in deep water and he told them how to do that and he told them where to do it. And all they had to do was change their focus, change their mindset, change their method of fishing so that they could catch what and who he wanted them to catch rather than what they were after themselves. Again, all these places are considered deep water. And you can be evangelizing all day. You can be amongst a sea of people, but you can be standing in shallow water. You can be out there evangelizing and trying to outreach all day long. But unless you are in deep water, it really won't be effective. And it's important that you understand why these places are listed in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 35 and 36. Because it's important for you to understand and recognize the way Jesus wants us to fish for men. Brothers and sisters, fishing for men is not for everyone. Fishing in deep water is certainly not for everyone. Deep water outreach and evangelism is not for everyone. It is for mature, meat-eating, armor-wearing, sword-carrying Christians who are willing and ready to do what it takes to win souls back to God through Christ no matter what it takes. In Chicago, 
where the opening of this message was filmed. Deep water would be in Grant Park, but not just the park, the benches in Grant Park at night where you see men, women, and children sleeping outside, sometimes even in the cold. That's deep water. Deep water would be standing outside the homeless shelter just before they open the doors at night because there are scores of people standing in line waiting to get a bed. And the reason that you go there is because there are going to be some people that do not get a bed. Two things, you want to reach the people who are standing in line, but then you especially want to catch those who will not get in the door. Deep water. It's inside a halfway house when men just arrived from the prison. And the reason I say that, because I've been there, the reason I say that is because that's the very moment that they can so easily be drawn right back into the world from whence they came. So that deep water means that you are there to give them an alternative to the resources that they were used to so that you can lift Jesus up and draw them unto him. Sometimes at that halfway house, and there are halfway houses all over the country, sometimes in those halfway houses, the young men or even the, the older men that are there, when they get out of prison, they want to change. But if they aren't giving the resources or they aren't giving the avenue with which to do that, they often will fall away. So you have to be there in that deep water to give them what they need, to show them the path that they need to take, to give them the resource that they will need because typically they don't know what to do next. They don't have a clue on what to do next now that they have this newfound freedom and they are out of jail halfway and they don't know the steps to take to maintain that freedom or how to get on a new path other than the old path that took them to jail. Deep Water is inside the public libraries where countless homeless people go each and every single day to get free access to computers because they're there because they, number one it's warm number two it's, it's dry they're off the street they can go there they can get free access to computers during the day but it's deep water because they are often there in the middle of that distraction instead of going out looking for jobs looking for a place to stay to be able to get back up on their feet it's deep water and when you go there to help show them how to do those things. Deep water is standing outside the liquor stores or the drug houses or even the places where prostitutes hang out. That's deep water because when you go there you are certainly going to be in the thick of it. The thickest deep water that you can find out standing outside the liquor stores or outside the drug houses or on the street corners where the prostitutes hang out. That is the deepest water that you can possibly find. But you have to be ready. You absolutely have to be ready before you take on that kind of deep water. And this message is designed to help you get there. Again, fishing in deep water is not for everybody. Fishing for men is not for everybody. Everybody cannot do it. Everybody should do it, because it clearly says in the book of Proverbs that he who wins souls is wise. But fishing for men and fishing in deep water is not for everybody. Everybody is not ready. Everybody is not seasoned. Everybody is not strong enough, mature enough, strengthened enough in the, in the faith and willing to be able to, to do these things, because it takes willingness. You cannot do it without willingness, and then once you have that willingness, you have to be committed to be able to go there over and over and over and over again. Because let me tell you something that I've, I've let me tell you something that I've experienced being out there in the thick of it. The men 
who are outside in these homeless shelters will not trust you, number one, because they consider you an authority. Even though the authorities that are over them, whether it's authorities in prison or authorities at that shelter, you won't be trusted because you come along as a spiritual authority. Now, some of them will open up to you, but they won't trust you at first. And as long as you're there, committed over and over and over again, that wall and that barrier will slowly start to break down and they will slowly start to open up. And that is when Jesus has the opportunity to go in, knock on the door of their hearts, and use you as a vessel to draw them unto himself. So, let's say you've done all this already. Let's say you've used the right bait. Let's say you've gone to the right location. Let's say you've fished in deep water and you've caught the attention of someone who is ready and willing to give their life to the Lord, what do you do next? And let's take it one step further, saying you already know how to usher them into the body of Christ and saying that you know how to lead them through the sinner's prayer and that you know how to give them Acts 2 and 38 and that you know how to give them Romans 10, 9 and 10 and that you know how to give them the things and the tools and the and, and the, the nuggets that come from within God's Word. Let's say you already know how to do all that. What do you do next? Let's say that now they are following God through Christ and they have a relationship with God through Christ, but they still don't have a church home yet. What do you do? And they're counting on you as their mentor or guide or brother and sister in Christ or even if you're a pastor or, or a lay leader and they come to your class as a student, what do you do next? So let's say that you've gotten them to the place to where they are, they're on fire for the Lord. They're ready to go to the next level. And, but you have to be able to, to get them there. If they don't have a church home yet or even if they do and they're just sitting in the pews not knowing what to do next because they're not taught that sitting in the pews and coming to church and on Sunday and just coming to Bible study on Wednesday is not all of it. That's part of it, but that's not all of it. So if you don't teach them and tell them what to do next, they will continue to sit there year after year after year after year after year, coming to church every Sunday, going to Bible study every Wednesday without knowing what to do next, without ever knowing that it's time to get out there and go to work. It's time to go fish for men. It's time to go out into the deep water and lift Jesus up so he can draw people unto himself. So the next thing you do, now that they've made it that far, is to start them on the process of becoming a seasoned saint. So the next thing you do is to add salt. And here's how you do that. Adding salt to help that person who is now on fire for the Lord learn how to take their walk to the next level means that you teach them how to study God's Word, not just read the Bible, study God's Word in depth. You have to be willing, able, and ready to teach them. You have to be mature enough to teach them how to study the Word of God in depth. And it's vitally important and it's their process of becoming a seasoned saint. So you have to add salt to them. You have to teach them how to study and hear God's word and to do what it says. You have to teach them what you have been taught so that they can learn how to apply it to their own lives. You have to teach them what you have been taught and then teach them how to apply it to their own lives. That's how you add salt. That's how you begin to add salt to them so that they can go through the process of becoming a seasoned saint. You have to teach them how to walk right, talk right, and live right, 
and sing and pray right and love right so that they can become a blessing to others, so that they can be used as a vessel for God to go out and be a blessing to others like you've been a blessing to them. You have to teach them how to be living witnesses and living sacrifices and willing servants and willing vessels. And you have to teach them how to become not just a Bible scholar, because there are a whole lot of religious people out there that can quote the Bible, but to become a servant of God, a servant able to be used by God for His glory. And when they're ready, they can be sent out two by two after about three years of training so that they can witness the exact same process that took you out there into deep water to draw them. Now they are ready to go out and draw others. See, if you read your Bible, you will learn that Jesus, after three years of training, the disciples sent them out two by two because they were trained and ready to use and apply what they had been taught. They were ready after three years, not five years or 10 years or 15 or even especially not 20. Three years, they were trained and ready to go out two by two and apply what they had been taught. They were mature. They had been through many circumstances. They had seen and witnessed many things. And after three years, they were ready. Don't have people sitting up under you for five years, ten years, still holding on to the same title, still thinking that coming to church and going to Bible study is all there is because it isn't. There's a whole lot more involved to this thing called salvation. And unless you are willing to take that next step and go to that next level, you yourself won't even get there. So you certainly can't reach back and bring somebody along with you. So three years of training, send them out two by two so that they can witness the Holy Spirit work within the world. Because you have to remember, they were once out there in deep water. So it's vitally important that you, now that they have been seasoned and you've added salt to them, to send them out into the world so that they can witness exactly what the Holy Spirit is and how it works through them to help draw others, lifting up Jesus, to draw them unto himself. And what more effective way to do that than to send them right back into the same deep water where you found them. Because once they're seasoned, you can send them out two by two into the fire where the devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy everything that you have taught them and everything that Jesus has imparted and instilled into them. Send them out into the fire. And again, some of the thickest water, some of the deepest water, and some of the thickest fire that you will ever meet and see and witness is standing outside the liquor store and standing on the block where the drug dealers have a stronghold and standing on the corners evangelizing and outreach where prostitutes hang out. Deepest water, thickest fire. That's where you need to send them, because that's where they are from. So what better way and what more, more effective way than to get the Holy Spirit to use them out in that fire where they came from and out in that deep water where you were used to draw them out of. Send them out two by two after three years of training so that they can begin to witness and minister and lay hands and speak life into death and destruction and bring light into darkness. Send them out two by two so that they can return with a good report of the good news that they witnessed the Holy Spirit do out there on the battlefield. Again, fishing for men is not for everyone. 
and certainly fishing in deep water is not for everyone. So to help you get started, years ago I wrote a book titled Transform Your Schedule, Transform Your Life. And in it, in this book, are about a dozen calendars write about a dozen calendars uh, month by month that show step by step instructions and it gives detailed suggestions on where to fish in deep water how to use the right bait it, it shows a number of things in this book in, including a very comprehensive curriculum that you can follow Again, I wrote this book several years ago. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and through the libraries and all other places, but or even on my website, LessonsForLifeBooks.com. But these calendars can help you learn to understand, to apply how to fish in deep water and how to fish for men. Again, fishing for men is not for everyone. And if you're not ready, will not be effective at it. So take what you've learned here today and put your faith into action by fishing for men using the right bait at the right location so that when you lift Jesus up and he draws them out of the deep water unto himself and they become a seasoned saint after you've added salt so they can be sent out into the deep water and onto the into the fire and onto the battlefield to work for the Lord and to help lift up and edify the church and to build up God's kingdom. So that when you arrive in heaven, when it's your time, when your number is up, when you lay down and rest and the trumpet sounds, when it's your time, God can say, well done my good and faithful servant. I'm Pastor Keith. May God bless you. And may he keep you today and always. In Jesus' name.